चाहिए थी वो नहीं हुई रोजगार के जितने मौके मिलने चाहिए थे नहीं मिले मैं मैं आपके जज्बातों की कदर करती हूँ अगर अगर इस प्रदेश में और केंद्र में हमारी सरकारी बनी तो हम आपकी उम्मीदों पूरी करने की हर कोशिश करेंगे The government will consider the demand for the formation of Telangana state at an appropriate time for due consultation. The common minimum program already spells out under uh, this what we need to do in this regard. We need to consult all concerned, offer proper consultation. I think uh, we are committed to the establishment of a state of Telangana. Seventeenth September, nineteen forty-eight. More than a year after India's independence, Telangana became free from centuries of feudal oppression, carrying with it the dream of a better tomorrow. It began its journey towards a future free from poverty, unemployment, and hunger. Previously, a part of the Nizam's dominion. Telangana was an independent and surplus state for 8 long years with Hyderabad as its capital till the formation of Andhra Pradesh. Andhra, separated from the state of Madras, was also an independent state since 1953 with Karnool as its capital. But soon after its inception, this resource-hungry state began clamoring for its merger with Telangana. and for the formation of Vishal Andhra a demand which prime minister nehru said smacked of an expansionist imperialism after centuries of marginalization the people of telangana however were not willing to surrender their lives their freedom and their resources once again the state's reorganization commission of 1956 endorsed the Telangana people's fears of exploitation by the Andhras and recommended that Telangana remain a separate state yet through political manipulation Telangana was merged with Andhra to form Andhra Pradesh against the wishes of its people a gentleman's agreement gave an assurance of fair play and a guarantee to safeguard the interests of the region But 5 decades later the reality today is that the state has defaulted on every one of the promises it made with all the privileges wealth and power gone into the hands of its elite partners telangana continues to starve struggle and suffer even today Two of India's mighty rivers, Krishna and Godavari, wind their way through Telangana, gathering more than two thirds of their waters from here. The Hyderabad government, during its regime, had made an ambitious blueprint to harness these waters. It was imagined that irrigation projects on these rivers would take at least 70 lakh more acres into their fold. and turn this arid and overexploited region into a green and prosperous one but with the merger of the two states in 1956 the fate of telangana got sealed forever all the projects contemplated before the merger were abandoned those already in process came to a grinding halt and the ones promised in the new setup are either yet to take off or remain eternally unfinished for almost 50 years the people of telangana have waited silently for the water they believed was theirs 
unaware that their land, water and projects would be taken away bit by bit and even their age-old resources would be allowed to dry up, silt and decay. In Telangana, the area under surface irrigation has in fact shrunk by almost half from 20 lakh acres in 1956 to just about 12 now. After all these years, the image of Telangana is very disquieting today. In its long alliance with Andhra, what Telangana has lost is hardly beyond anybody's imagination. In the Krishna waters, Telangana has a share of at least 550 TMC. But with Bhima, Kalvakurti, Nettampad, SLBC Tunnel Canal and Nagarjun Sagar tail pond pending for decades, it's barely able to use 100 TMC of water out of the 900 used up by the state. Almost 800 TMC is used up by the Andhra region. Sri Silam and Nagarjun Sagar dams, the temples of modern India on River Krishna, had promised to give water in equal measure to both Andhra and Telangana. But even these so-called temples have turned into monuments of denial and exaction for the people of this region. While water flows to Andhra from the Sri Silam project, Telangana continues to wait for its share in these waters. Promised decades ago, the Sri Silam left bank tunnel canal is yet to surface. Nagarjun Sagar Dam, originally proposed at Aileshwaram, about 19 kilometers from the present site, would have given abundant water to Telangana. But soon after the merger, it was moved downstream, leaving most of this region quite literally high and dry. And with further diversion of water for power generation, Telangana is starved of water even here. Kodavari the Ganges of the south meanders through Telangana for almost 600 miles. Yet, Sriram Sagar is the lone project on this mighty river. And even this project, grounded 40 years ago, is still in its first phase. Of the proposed 15 lakh acres, hardly 6 lakh are irrigated. Ichampalli, a lift irrigation project proposed by the Nizam's government years ago, is still in doubt. And same is the fate of Yallampalli, Devadula, Dummagudam, Lendi, Gutpa, Ali Sagar, Pranahita and Lower Penuganga and most other projects on Godavari and its tributaries. While the Telangana farmer waits helplessly, more than 90% of his share in the Godavari waters also quietly flows to Andhra. Year after year, the government promises to revive and restore irrigation projects. Budgets show massive fund allocations. But Telangana remains thirsty, parched and barren, mile after mile. The Bachavat Tribunal on Water Allocations foresaw this situation even in 1976 and warned that Telangana should not be deprived of its rightful share of waters. Yet, the worst fears of the people of Telangana have come true. In the combined state of Andhra Pradesh, the Telangana farmers have not only lost their water, but also their land and their livelihood. Mehboob Nagar, the largest district of Telangana, is where the Krishna River with its tributaries Bhima and Tungabhadra enters Andhra Pradesh. Yet, drought has become a permanent feature of Mahbub Nagar. And today the region is not able to sustain even its animal wealth, more than two-thirds of which it has already lost to the slaughterhouses. <laughs> The once land-owning farmers are landless laborers now. 
Almost 14 lakh people migrate from this district every year in search of work, leaving behind their families and their children to fate. Uncared and abandoned, some die of starvation. For centuries, tanks and ponds were the lifeline of Telangana. More than one and a half lakh such water bodies once dotted this landscape, sometimes linked in a chain with provision for overflows from one to another. But this centuries-old heritage of water harvesting has almost gone. A willful and deliberate neglect of these resources has reduced the area under tank cultivation to less than one-fourth now. Deprived of surface water, the Telangana farmer had no option but to explore groundwater. But this over-dependence on this subsoil resource has led to a situation where even at 700 feet, one is not sure of finding water, and certainly not before several attempts. The Telangana farmers have sunk more than 20,000 crores of rupees of their own money so far on bore wells and pump sets while the state subsidized the rest of Andhra by diverting surface water and maintaining their projects and canals out of the public fund. Mushampalli, a village in Nalgunda district, has more bore wells than it has people. Almost 6,000 bore wells were drilled in this one village, but only a few hundred work now, and even these when there are no power outages. Baira Ram Reddy, the villagers now call him Borwell Reddy, has sunk 56 bores. Of these, 49 have failed. The obsession with bore wells is an optimism driven by despair. But it is also pushing many helpless farmers into a debt trap and a death trap. For every farmer who has lost his life, there are countless others who are in distress. Just another bad season could push many of these fragile lives over the edge. The human tragedy in Telangana continues. Natural fluoride from deep down has now made its way into drinking water, crippling many for life. Thousands of villages with hand pumps as their only source of drinking water are reeling under fluorosis. And more than two lakh innocent people, mostly children, have fallen victim to this dreaded disease. <laughs> Nalgunda, one of the worst fluoride-affected districts in Telangana, is the home of the Nagarjun Sagar Reservoir. And yet, safe drinking water is a pipe dream for many. For the people of Telangana, however, the saga of denial and disadvantage doesn't end with river waters. It penetrates every aspect of their life. But the loss of educational and employment avenues were not just a loss of individual opportunities for the people, but of a collective dream of rebuilding their lives and their land. From the State Secretariat to the High Court, everywhere Thelanganites have faced continuous rejection even from their share of opportunity. The Andhra Pradesh Secretariat accommodates just 8% of its workforce from this region. While the High Court, the very abode of justice, 
has not more than 20% people from here in its ranks. And sadly, not a single Telangana person in the last so many decades was ever allowed to grace the seat of the Advocate General, although they have been distinguishing themselves elsewhere. The recent appointments of mere seven persons of Telangana origin among the 86 magisterial positions only goes to show that even today, the injustice continues. Suppressed for centuries, the people of Telangana were always a disadvantaged lot. Denial of education, social and cultural expression, and political access, all these had pushed them to the margins. To undo some of the injustices done to them in his administration, the Nizam of Hyderabad had introduced the Mulki, or the domicile rule in Telangana. It was the same fear of denial in the combined state that the continuation of the Mulki rule was made one of the preconditions to the merger in 1956. But this did not stop the influx of people from Andhra. Over the years, their numbers rose alarmingly, clogging all the employment opportunities in government and semi-government sectors. Frustrated by such continuous exclusion, the people of Telangana launched an agitation for a separate state in 1969. More than 400 youth died in this movement. A spate of new accords were signed, orders issued, and formulae devised to pacify the agitating masses. Government orders were issued in 1969 and again in 1985 to repatriate about 82,000 employees who had usurped the jobs of the Thelanganites. But none of these were ever implemented. On the contrary, the violation of the Mulki norms continued by devious ways. Jobs were doled out to the outsiders by creating autonomous bodies and institutions just to bypass the rule. After a prolonged and seemingly endless legal battle, in 1973 the Supreme Court of India upheld the validity and continuation of Mulki rules in Telangana. But the Andhra elite reacted violently even to this order of the highest court of the land and started the Jai Andhra agitation, demanding the withdrawal of all the constitutional protections given to Telangana. Almost as if they wouldn't want to continue in this setup if they were not allowed a free reign over the opportunities and resources of this region. Bowing once again to their pressures, all the safeguards, including the Supreme Court judgment, were nullified through a constitutional amendment. Telangana has been a victim of politics of domination and discrimination, where even the law of the land has failed to protect the rights and the interests of its people. The only hope for Telangana now is to break free of this unfair alliance and seek its destiny in its own land. It has indeed been a long and difficult journey for the Telangana movement, but it never ceased. Because the denial of political, economic and social opportunities and the assault on Telangana's language, culture and identity never stopped. While some people continued to bear their loss and suffering silently, many others have been relentlessly fighting for the restoration of Telangana state. In 1997, the Bharatiya Janata Party at its Kakinada convention passed a resolution seeking separate statehood for Telangana. But there was nothing more to it than taking a political advantage out of this sentiment. Once in power, the BJP pushed this idea to the side to please its ally, the Telugu Desham. The left parties too never tire of demanding special packages for the development of Telangana. And the Congress, out of power in the year 2000, once again cried for Telangana, 
when all of its legislators from this region appealed to Mrs. Sonia Gandhi to take up the cause of a separate Telangana. The Congress delegation also met the president to convince him of such a need. But beyond deriving some immediate political gain, no one really cared for the plight of the people. The colossal human misery in a region so richly endowed with resources is a travesty of justice. A surplus state at the time of the merger, Telangana today presents a dismal picture of poverty, unemployment and hunger. Agriculture is the worst hit. At least 400 farmers have committed suicide in the recent past and thousands more have perished since the assault on water resources began years ago. The hostile agricultural policies of the government, denial of assured water, soaring costs of agricultural inputs and the complete collapse of rural credit system have driven the Telangana farmers and artisans to despair, even to death. Already neck deep in debt, for the Telangana farmer, there seemed no respite from the misery. The steep hike in par tariff brought in by the Telugu Desham government in the year 2000 was a severe blow. For out of 24 lakh power connections in the state, 17 lakh were in Telangana alone. When the farmers protested, they were mercilessly silenced by the state. Moved by the plight of the farmers and hurt by the inhuman response of the state, a son of the soil, Sri Chandrasekhar Rao, the then deputy speaker of the Andhra Pradesh Assembly, pleaded with the government to stop the excesses and withdraw the hike. But faced with an insensitive and indifferent government, he launched an agitation for a separate Telangana. For that is where he felt justice to the people of this region was possible. And soon the movement assumed enormous proportions and the newly formed Telangana Rashtra Samiti gained huge ground across the region. <laughs> Yeti Paisa, 
ఆలోచన జరిగితే తప్ప మనం ఎప్పుడు సాధించుకోలేము మన ప్రజలను కాపాడుకోలేమని ఉద్దేశం కోరి నేను ఈ ఉద్యమాన్ని అన్ని త్యాగాలు సిద్ధపడి ప్రారంభించిన విషయం మీకు తెలుసు నేను తెలంగాణ ప్రజల పక్షాన కాపాడ కుక్కలు ఉంటాను మళ్ళీ ఎప్పుడు ఎక్కడ ఏ తప్పు జరిగినా అనుకున్న అనుకున్న తప్పు రాకపోయినా మళ్ళీ ఈ జెండా మళ్ళీ కట్టిన మొదలు పెట్టా చెప్పి చెప్పడం జరిగింది ఆ రకంగా నేను మీ అందరి ముందు మరొకసారి ప్రమాదం చేస్తా ఉన్నాను అవసరమైతే నా ప్రాణాలు పరిగెట్టైనా సరే తెలంగాణ రాష్ట్రం సాధించడం ఖాయం 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 The merger of Telangana with Andhra was not eternal. Prime Minister Nehru once likened it to a matrimonial alliance with an inbuilt scope for divorce. Even the state's reorganization committee had suggested an initial trial period and a separation if congenial coexistence was not possible. At the time of the reorganization of states the people of Telangana on the advice of the the then leaders wanted to watch the developments for some time whether united andhra pradesh would work to the advantage of all it proved otherwise the people of telangana were not happy with what has happened in the first two decades after the formation of andhra pradesh that led to the agitation in 1969 again on the advice of the leaders people were reconciled to give another try to continue in the united state subsequent developments also proved that andhra pradesh would not work the people therefore are now thoroughly convinced that separation is the only solution the demand of the people of this region for a separate state is not a new development it was voiced much before the formation of andhra pradesh and continues to be raised even thereafter the reluctance of the people to join andhra pradesh was fear of exploitation in the enlarged state and the resistance of the people to continue in the present setup is the experience of being actually exploited therefore the demand for a separate state persists the people of this region very earnestly feel that their problems can be solved only in a separate state that is if they have political power to govern themselves and shape their destinies the people of telangana were always for a separate state in 1971 parliamentary elections they favored those who fought the elections on the separate telangana slogan but their mandate was not honored in 2004 elections to the state assembly and the parliament they once again reaffirmed their longing for a separate identity by giving a massive mandate to the telangana rashtra samiti and the congress the congress had indeed promised statehood to telangana if they came to power both in the state and at the center with a huge support at home and a clear approval even from the people of andhra who routed the champions of united andhra pradesh the telangana movement has become a force to reckon with and with the unstinted support of several national parties and their leaders Telangana issue has also gained a huge moral ground today. Telangana issue is not a new issue. It was started about 50 years back. Personally commission has given the recommendation to have a separate Telangana why? The reason is regional imbalance, the cultural heritage, the historic background of Telangana. which was the main consideration for the commission to give its recommendation to have a separate telangana chuki bahut pehle hi ye telangana alag tha isko jabardasti andhra ke sath milaya gaya aur atyachar hua aapke sath ye to ekdam itihas bata raha hai bihar se alag ho gaya jharkhand aaj uttar pradesh se uttaranchal alag ho तेलंगाना बनेगा बनेगा कोई भाई का 
करने की हर कोशिश करेंगे The inclusion of the formation of Telangana in the common minimum program of the United Progressive Alliance with the consent of all the partners its mention in the presidential address to the joint session of the parliament and the commitment made by Dr Manmohan Singh in his first public press conference as prime minister all speak of the determination of the new government to restore statehood to Telangana with assurances and promises coming from such high offices justice now seems too close and Telangana waits with high hopes to realize its long cherished dream through a peaceful and democratic process the government will consider the demand for the formation of telangana state at an appropriate time for due consultation the common minimum program already spells out under uh, this what we need to do in this regard we need to consult all concerned offer proper consultation i think uh, we are committed to the establishment of a state of telangana the struggle for telangana is not some exotic fight for a land at stake are much deeper issues of socio-economic unevenness political alienation and the very existence and identity of a people in the face of extreme exploitation the people of telangana feel that a better future for them is possible only in a telangana state a state that is their own and where both wealth and power are in their hands their hopes and their fears are both real broken battered and betrayed many times before it may not be easy to contain the volcanic upheaval of their anger if let down once again <laughs>